They say tee it high, let it fly. But if you tee it higher, does it really go farther? Today, we're gonna find out. Hey golfers, Thomas and Drew here with you again at Les Bolstead Golf Course. We're outside. Today we've got a fun one, a hot topic. It is tee height. And Thomas, we get a lot of questions on the channel about um, how you decide how high to tee the ball up. And so walk me through your method and then maybe today we'll do some testing. Yeah, so typically when I tee the ball up, I'm at least putting that ball about halfway above the crown. Okay. Um, so my angle of attack with the driver, generally speaking, is five to seven degrees up. However, not everyone can do that. Yeah. So if you have an angle of attack with your driver that's down, for example, then it is harder to tee the ball up high because you may sky the ball. Right, right, exactly. So the fun thing about today is we're gonna try a, a three different tee heights. We're gonna have you hit some shots. We'll collect some data on TrackMan. Uh, with that said, what do you think we're gonna find? So for example, the lowest setting, the medium setting and then the highest setting. What do you think we're gonna find? Will people actually hit it further if they tee it up higher? I think once again, it's gonna depend on what the player's angle of attack is like and also what loft they have on their driver. Okay. So for me specifically, my driver is a nine degree driver set to eight degrees. So again, because my angle of attack is fairly high, I need to tee it high to get the ball up in the air. If your angle of attack is down with the driver, you need to tee that ball a little bit lower, otherwise sure. to avoid one, skying it, but also knowing that when you have loft on the driver, it's gonna cause that ball to get up in the air and spin. So I guess what you're saying is for you, you might hit it further with a higher tee height. I may, I hope, right. I hope to. All right, well let's see what Trackman tells us. Nice little tiny draw. Do you wanna know what your attack angle was there? Six. 4.6. All right, so Thomas, you just hit 15 tee shots, uh, five with a low, kind of almost on the ground tee height, then there was medium and high. And so we've got some interesting numbers here. A lot of what you kind of thought might happen did happen, uh, given your swing type. So when it really hits up on the ball, uh, you did gain carry distance with the highest tee height setting. And you also basically lost 30 yards of carry distance when you teed it all the way to this kind of low setting there, or the low height. Um, but speaking on the numbers here, I think the most notable thing is the height, right? So, you know, we talked about carry distance and that was kind of what we led with was distance, but the height is the biggest deal here because you hit it 72 feet off the ground with your low tee. Then when you teed it really high, it was 132. So that's 60 feet of height, we're talking in difference there, and it was 111 with your medium. So uh, there's a very big difference in ball flight that can be had by just manipulating the tee a little bit. Yeah, and I think a lot of it comes down to the conditions you're playing in too. I probably wouldn't tee it as high as I was when I was teeing it really high if I was hitting into the wind, yeah. or if I had some really strong wind coming from the side, yeah. because it'd be harder for me to control. Now, pretty, pretty straight wind today and not too much and I noticed I was able to hit the ball very, very straight with the high yep. tee. But once you start getting that ball up in the air at 132 feet in the air, when you have wind, it is going to be harder to control. Right. And the other piece we too wanted to talk about was attack angle, right? So you talked about um, you know, you're hitting it up, you know, five plus degrees with driver even more sometimes. Yep. Uh, but when you tee it low to the ground, you can't really do that and still hit the ball solidly. So your attack angle dropped to 1.8 with the low tee. And it was 4.4 with the medium T tee, tee height, and then at the highest T height, it was 6.1. So, and is that just, and that's not really something you're thinking about really as your swing, it's just kind of, you're just trying to hit the ball. And by, uh, you know, just by normal natural reaction, you hit up on the ball as the T is higher off the ground. Yeah, you, you're, I'm trying to sweep the ball off the T. When it's, when it's higher, I don't want to sky it. Right. When it's lower, there's no chance I'm going to sky it. So then naturally I got to come down a little bit lower yep. with the angle of attack. And that's why a lot of tour pros, they, they will you know, hit down on it maybe one degrees on, on average versus a lot of some tour pros that don't hit the ball maybe as straight. Um, now you watch like Rory McIlroy, for example, when he's hitting it, hitting bombs, he's hitting up on it for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a wide open hole, but if they've got to hit it with the ball straight, they may tee it a little bit lower and hit down on it a little bit for control. Yep, yep. And actually one thing I wanted to note too, you talk about control and uh, maybe hitting it more, I guess, accurately or accuracy based for uh, maybe a lower T height. But 
you also gain swing speed with the highest tee height. Uh, and is that something that you were, I mean, were you, you weren't really thinking about, it was kind of just a reaction when the tee or the ball is up higher, you kind of have that almost that mentality, you can kind of go after it a little bit more, swing a little faster. Yeah, well my goal when I was testing here was to try and swing all 15 swings with the exact same club speed. Yeah. When that ball was a little higher, it's, it's easier to use the ground in your golf swing. Yeah. And you're actually kind of coming up, you're actually getting a little more speed. Sure. I wasn't intentionally, so I wasn't going after it as hard as I was. I was trying to get as close as I could to about 111 miles an hour. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was about one or two miles an hour faster. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it was about so. one twelve point five was your club speed with the highest tee height, and then it was one ten point five or one ten point eight. Okay. With the other two, so I mean, it's not like it's a crazy difference, but I think it's just something to note that um, that may have contributed to some extra distance because there's actually total distance between medium and high was just one difference, one yard in difference, but the, the carry distance of 291 versus 284 was, I think, notable there, too, uh, with a higher T height versus medium. And then the other thing, too, this might not be reflective of most golfers, but for you, your smallest dispersion was with the highest T. It's actually a crazy small dispersion on this map right now. Uh, not that the other two map or, you know, ovals are bad, but that one's just really small. You had basically a five of the same tee shot. Yeah, and it felt comfortable. So with, with the testing, the, the direction we did it, we started with medium tee height yeah. first, and that felt pretty normal to me. Then I then we did the, the low tee height, and then we went to the high tee height. Mm -hmm. And going from that low tee height to that high tee height, yeah. it was just so much more comfortable for me to feel like I could swing a little more freely sure. at it. And one the more thing to touch on, I think, is worth noting, I'm going to bring up the impact location and then talk about spin. Because one thing when you have a low tee height, it's more likely anyway, uh, could be the case, is hitting the ball low on the face, uh, which brings a higher spin rate into play. You notice your spin on average jumped up to 25.89 with a low tee height, and you were about 17 and 1900 with the, the medium and high. So when you look at the impact location, you see that that circle kind of moves down the driver face a little bit. You had a few shots below the midline of the club face, obviously with high and medium, both of them were above center on average. So that does play into it as well. And I guess and it does depend on the player. You know, if you are a player that swings down on the ball, uh, teeing it up high might not be the great play, but I think we saw carry distance can be had, extra club speed can be had by simply teeing up the ball a little higher. Yeah, and six to 800 RPMs of spin is going to equate to a lot more distance or a lot yep. less distance because spin is definitely king when it comes to trying to get generate some distance. Angle of attack is also going to influence not only mm -hmm. hit location, but angle of attack is going to influence that spin a lot there for too. Sure. So. For sure. Well, I think this was good. We got a lot of information here, Thomas. Uh, I mean, Ultimately, there's, it, it creates different conditions up on the launch. And I think we saw that today, low, medium, or high, whatever your preference is, just know that it will impact how the ball is launched off the club face. So Thomas, thanks for hitting all the shots today, giving us your insight. Uh, golfers, make sure when you're teeing it up, you understand those differences in the tee height and how it can impact your tee shots. Make sure you leave a comment as well and subscribe to the channel for future videos.